connection without Kenny McDowell and the transfer listed Chick Charnley, who were both ordered off in midweek. Manager David Hay, who really does need the patience of a cent, stands by Les Fridge in goal, even though Campbell money is fit again. One cheering note for Hay has been the recent form of Icelandic international player Gudmundur Torfason, who's missed large chunks of the season because of injury. He scored five goals in his last four games. Torfason holds an Icelandic record of 19 goals in an 18-game championship. And back in the side today for his second first-team appearance is new signing John Hewitt, who scored in his debut against Airdrie last week, but was not eligible to play in the Scottish Cup tie against Hearts. The man whose goals helped shape much of Aberdeen's modern history hopes to help Saints to safety. Rangers are along expected lines and powering their way in the championship race. They're unbeaten in their last 11 league matches, plus a Scottish Cup tie against Aberdeen at Petaudry. The last league defeat was on November 23rd, would you believe, against St Mirren at Ibrooks. Well, helping lead the revenge mission for that chalk result will be Ali McCoy, who's been in terrific scoring form all season. He's hit 26 goals so far and has scored in each of the last four games. Another player in excellent form is defender David Robertson, who's expected to be named in the forthcoming full Scotland squads. His tremendous pace has been a great asset to the Ibrox club. Robertson hasn't missed a match since signing last summer, and today is his 39th in a row. The referee is Andrew Waddle from Edinburgh. He's been in the Grade 1 list for 14 years. He's on the current FIFA list, and next month he handles the UEFA Cup tie between Torino and BK Copenhagen. So St Mirren get the match underway. Saints have won the previous two Premier League matches, scoring seven goals in the process. And yet they go into this match with just 16 points from 31 games. They've beaten Rangers at Ibrox, they've beaten Dundee United at Tannadice, and they've drawn at Celtic Park, Tyne Castle and Petodre. And now they have 13 games to close a seven-point gap on Airdrie. Meanwhile, Rangers have 50 points from 31 games and a goal difference of plus 50. And eventually, one better play for the throw-in, two Rangers. Stevens to McCoyst. A little gap opening up there, great play by McCoyst and Dale Garvin. A magnificent goal for Rangers. Four minutes gone. Ali McCoy's playing a magnificent one two with Dale Gordon. It all began with a throw in from Gary Stevens. A little gap opened up for McCoy's to race through and get his 27th goal of the season. He scored in each of the last five games. A deadly finish again by Ali McCoy. Kailachenko to Spackman. Well, Robertson seemed to commit the foul there, and the referee eventually gets the free kick. That's Paul McIntyre picking out Lambert. Challenge all the way by Spackman. Good play by Lambert. And excellent play by McIntyre. Gets in the cross, a first time shot! Well, Thomas Stickroth reacting very quickly indeed. It was excellent play on the right by Paul McIntyre. He got the ball into the path of Stickroth. The first time shot there. That's McGowan. Oh, poor ball there to Mikhailichenko. A point taken out of the play by Manley, and this will be a booking for Manley. Well, he's already been spoken to. Breaks to John Hewitt, to Torfason. Well, disappointing pass from Torfason, allowing Richard Goff to step in. There's a real chance there for St Mirren to do something. The players forward. Uh, it's another chance for Rangers. It's Dale Gordon. Falls to the ground there as he's challenged by Roy Itkin. Free kick awarded. looking quite comfortable at the moment leading by a goal to nil it's headed on there by McCall McCoy and there Mikhailichenko Alexei Mikhailichenko 2-0 to Rangers 
23 minutes gone. And Alexi Mikhailichenko gets his fourth goal of the season. It all began as Gary Stevens sent the ball across the face of goal. The call was up there, the ball broke through, Ali McCoy's made the challenge. It looked as though the chance was gone here, and from a tight angle he drove the ball right through Westbridge into the back of the net. St. a nil, Rangers two. Here come Rangers again. It's Ali McCoy's cut out though by Roy Aitken. Well, Aitken is absolutely raging, shouting towards the referee. Well, unless St. Mirren gets some control here, they could be on a hiding. Of course, they've got to chase goals, they've also got to try and keep the back door close as well, but some excellent play there by Alexei Mikhailichenko. Now it's Nigel Spackman, completely missed there by Brodel. Mikhailichenko's in again, another slack call by St. Mirren. Spackman sending it across, Gary Stevens. It was Paul McIntyre putting his side in trouble there. And it was teed up for Gary Stevens. And the chance there for him to get his second goal of the season, but the ball off target. Well, David Hay, I wonder what's going through his mind. I spoke to him before kickoff. He was in jolly mood, but certainly not now. John Brown. Well, Gary Stevens and Akers of space on the right. Gary Stevens. Well, St. Byron can't be happy with the defending there. First of all, Stevens found plenty of space and then he was allowed to run through and have a shot. from Robertson, that's picked up now by McGowan for St Mirren. Lambert. Hewitt, Lambert again. Switch to Thomas Tickler. St Paul McIntyre in support, just to his left, but the high ball into the middle. It's cleared by Gary Stevens. Spackman. It's a fine ball to Mikhail Ochenko and plenty of space, Rangers pouring players forward. Well, he clips it through there looking for McCall. He had a few options open to him there, Alexei Mikhail Ochenko, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Stick off impeded by Robertson. Well, the final minutes of this first half ticking away, can St Mirren do something here, it's Lambert's free kick, Torferson's in there. He gets the break of the ball, it's swept away though by Gary Stevens. Only as far as Lambert. John Hewitt switched over to the right. And he wins the throw in. It's Hewitt to Aitken. Well, St. Mirren really having to commit everyone forward now. Trying to get something back here. Kevin McGowan, free uh, kick, surely, to St. Mirren. Uh, the referee awarding a goal kick. And Kevin McGowan, very unhappy indeed. Well, he certainly seemed to be impeded there. As Robertson made the challenge. Well, if that's not a free kick, I don't know what is. John Brown stepping in for Rangers. Forward to McCoist. It's a good challenge there by Jim Beattie. Chance on perhaps for St Mirren, it's Broddle taking on Gary Stevens. The ball deflected there off the boot of Gary Stevens for the corner kick. So Broddle setting up perhaps a last chance for St Mirren in this first half or well inside the final minute. Perhaps a chance for Saints to pull one back and give themselves some real hope for the second half. There's Roy Aitken moving into the Rangers penalty area. It's Paul Lambert to take the kick. Falls to Aiken. And the Torferson scores a sensational goal for St Mirren. 44 minutes. Andy Gorham can't believe it. What a tremendous strike there by Goodmunder Torferson. It was Roy Aitken who came in and got the ball. 
it broke through to Tarferson and with his left foot he drove it high into the roof of the net. So Tarferson gets his eighth goal of the season. Well, St Mirren will want to hold this situation as Rangers very much on the offensive after losing the goal. Nice little shimmy there by Dale Gordon, it's headed away by Roy Aitken. Well, it really has battle stations out there in the St Mirren penalty area at the moment. BT getting it clear. Goff's in there for Rangers, forward to Gary Stevens. And there goes the half-time whistle. Well, a terrific first half with Ali McCoy scoring the opening goal after four minutes. A lovely one-two with Dale Gordon before McCoy raced in to slam the ball into the back of the net. Then in the 23rd minute, from a very tight angle indeed, Alexei Mikhailichenko sending the ball right through Les Bridge. And then just a minute from half-time as the ball came over from the left, Roy Aitken nudged it through to Goodman de Torferson, and with his left foot he sent it high into the back of the net. The half-time score here at Love Street, St Mirren 1, Rangers 2. And St Mirren have made a substitution of sent on David Elliott. He's come on for Paul McIntyre. And Elliott's involved right away. Well, he started 17 games this season. And immediately getting forward, got the ball running out of play for the throw-in two Rangers. Well, St Mirren's tactic in this match was to try and stop the two fullbacks, the two Rangers fullbacks getting forward. And with Gary Stevens, who was fouled there, and David Robertson. It didn't exactly work for them in the first half, but uh, certainly Rangers should have cashed in more on their outfield superiority. And they should have had a couple more goals. So now they have to battle all over again, albeit the 2-1 ahead, but that's never enough. Torferson through the middle with him. Torferson trying to find Hewitt again. It's not up though by David Robertson. <laughs> Kailachenko does well. Through for Speckman. And just keeping the ball in play. McCall, Mikhailichenko, and he's popping up all over the place. Through to Dale Gordon. Well, that one certainly had Les Fritz scrambling across the goal. It was Alexei Mikhailichenko playing a delightful little through ball to him. The first time shot curling past the post. Mikhailichenko playing a little pass to McCoy, to Spackman. Wide out, wide out. Well, Les Fritz got his hand to the ball and sent it behind for the corner kick. Well, wide out and McCoyst causing problems there for St Mirren. Wide out, tried to play it through to McCoyst first time. It can block it, but then that was a very good save indeed by Les Fritz, preventing a certain goal. Well, wide out, letting his feelings be on. As Mikhailichenko sends it through. That's Gary Stevens. And he accepts the throw in. Forward to McCall. And again, Les Bridge in action. A free kick to St Mirren. It was right out on Elliott. Kevin McGowan with the free kick. Yeah. Climbing there and the free kick awarded for that climb there onto the shoulders of Goodman de Torferson. Yeah. And they got him looking on as Torferson starts to run, strikes it with his right foot. Oh, a marvellous save. Well, that really was a save of international class from Andy Gorham. Struck by Goodman de Torferson right round the wall, curling right into the far post and with the left hand. Andy Gorham saving. And it's off the face of the post this time. 
the latest moments for Rangers, but in actual fact, the offside flag goes up. Well, that really was a most remarkable shot by Torfason. Right outside the defensive wall, a tremendous curl on it, heading right towards the top corner. Now a chance for Rangers to counter-attack. It's Alexei Mikhailichenko with right out. He's onside, he's got Ellie McCoist in the middle. And Roy Aitken gets the ball behind for the goal kick. Well, Aitken is furious. But there's no doubt in my mind that right out was onside. David Hay, well, he must be pleased by the spirit of his side in the second half. The ball breaking away from Torfusson. That's Brown. Picked up by Broidel. Brown again. Good ball through for Ali McCoyce to chase. Rangers pouring men forward here. It's McCoyce. Blocked here by Roy Aitken. Well, Aitken says he's got the ball, but the referee says it's a free kick to Rangers. Well, there's Fridge organising his defence. So, an anxious moment here for St Mirren. They know they dare lose another goal. It's Mikhail Chenko! A magnificent save by Les Fritz. Well, we've been treated to some remarkable play here this afternoon in terms of dead ball situations. Another save of the highest class. Andy Gorham did likewise at the other end. From Goodman to Torfusson. Well, the players coming in from abroad showing how they can strike the ball with such style. Torfusson playing with Goff, Goff winning it. Followed by McCall to ride out. Dale Gordon. That's got the ball there by Broadle. We just have the free kick. The referee wants a word with the St Mirren player. So Julian Broadle, former Plymouth Argyle player, took a warning there by Mr Waddle. And well, Richard Goff clips a free kick forward. Lambert playing it to Aitken. Lambert again with stick left to his right. Torfusson through the middle. Hewitt to his left. He might go all the way. He's on. And he's on. Well, Paul Lambert has two goals to his credit this season. He had players to his right, players to his left. He decided to have a shot. Robertson through to right out. He's closed down by Aitken. Loses out to Lambert. The St. Mirren players pouring forward now. Still Lambert getting in the cross. Well, the chance was on there and squandered. Well, Walter Smith has been down to the dugout to join up to Knox. Neil Gordon for Rangers getting away from BT. Playing it through to Paul right out. The chance had for right out, blocked by Manley. Now it's Spackman. No penalties as a referee. And he's giving a bit of a talking to there to Nigel Spackman. Spackman toppled on the edge of the box. Robertson for Rangers. Wide out. Also done in waiting to make a substitution. Robert Dawson is on the touchline. Still play going on. Dale Gordon. Lovely switch of play to Gary Stevens, but Dale Gordon has taken a bad knock. Still Gary Stevens for Rangers. Oh, it's just lost the ball. Wide out in there. The referee halts the play. And some attention will be needed. Les Fritz had the ball, then lost it, but the referee indicating it come off right out his arm. And that's scrummage. So Murren have it all to do. There's Brown. Forward for McCoy, so that's a good ball. Robertson coming through in support. Aitken stepping in for St. Murren. There's well under pressure from Gordon. Offer there from the Ukrainian and all as well. Long 
ball from Aitken. Lands it off Hewitt. Goffs in there. Well, he left it to Gary Stevens and Tarkerson almost pounced. Well, I must say, Richard Goffs had a rather nervy afternoon. David Hay there, the St. manager, knows just what a battle he has in his hands. Dawson, through for John Hewitt, there's no flag shown. Torferson's in the middle, Richard Goff's there. Back to Hewitt it goes, Lambert's on the outside. Hewitt a bit short with the pass, Lambert has it. Away by McCall. Still St. Mirren pushing forward, it's cut out though by John Brown. Forward to Mikhailichenko. And there goes the final whistle. Well, a remarkable second half, St. Mirren fighting all the way. It was a second half marked by two excellent saves. Torferson there and McCoy certainly scoring early goals. But uh, a terrific save from Andy Gorham, from Goodman to Torferson, diving away to his left. And then at the other end, Les Bridge denying Alexei Mikhailichenko. The final score here at Love Street, St. Mirren 1, Rangers 2. Ali, you must be delighted uh, with another very good goal. What with Dale Garden? I was quite pleased. Um, it was a good one too. I played with Dale. I was just surprised to get it back off him. And uh, I saw Les coming. I was just quite happy to knock it by him. And that's five goals in your last five games. That's uh, good scoring. Yeah, I'm pleased with the, the goal scoring point of view, Jerry. And it's nice that the goals are going in different games as well, which helps the team, the team cause. But uh, the, the important thing is we're in a good wee role just now and we're winning our games, which is important. But you're not killing off the opposition. You are 2 nothing up today and you definitely took the foot off the pedal. Yeah, I think the manager quite rightly criticised us at half-time. I thought we played reasonably well uh, to go 2 nil in front and then we did, we took our foot off the gas and we lost a bad goal, which I wouldn't like to see again. But uh, it's something we'll definitely have to hammer home. The first half was a bit of a disappointment for St Man, wasn't it? Yeah, that's true. Uh, they were all over the place and uh, our defenders found it uh, really difficult to cope with their forwards. But... Uh, they were leading 2 0 at half time. We, we knew it was always going to be difficult, so we added another uh, uh, striker into our uh, system. So that worked out better, and uh, uh, we were unlucky not to equalise. Certainly, the spirit shown by the team in the second half must give you hope for the remaining games. Uh, there are 12 games left, I believe, and uh, it's going to be difficult. There are still seven, seven uh, points between us and Edri. But uh, in saying that, I mean, we must fight for it. Are you confident of another championship? Confident without being overconfident. Uh, you only have to look back to last season when uh, I wasn't so confident going into the last game. Um, prior to that, I was very confident we were seven points in front and it all hinged in the last game. So we know that uh, we're confident, conf confident but um, we can't show any uh, complacency at all. And maybe a wee lesson in the second half here this afternoon to that end. That's right. If we didn't lose the goal and we come in at 2-0, we've got a little bit of a cushion and we can enjoy and try and play some football. But, but St Man made it difficult for us, scored a good goal and uh, there's always a chance they can score another one after that. So it's, it's not a, a pleasant situation to be in when you're only one in front.